Today we have reports suggesting that Intel is going to have at least 7 R graphics cards. From NVIDIA, we can expect RTX 40 series GPUs to use only PCIe Gen 4 interface, but these will be having an upper hand over RDNA 3 GPUs in one aspect. And finally, we have reports on Ryzen 7000 series that suggest that it is only going to use DDR5 memory, but it is going to have a brand new Expo technology. Till now, we know that Intel is going to have three tiers in Arc Alchemist GPU family. The GPUs will fall under the three categories, namely Arc 3, Arc 5, and Arc 7. From the launch of Arc Mobile GPUs, we assume that Intel is going to have two desktop GPUs in Arc 3 family that are the A350 and A380 graphics cards. While the Arc 5 series is going to have only one GPU, the Arc 7 is going to have at least two. So in total, we have possibly five desktop Arc GPUs. However, according to a new report, Intel is going to have at least seven new GPUs in the family. The origin of this news is a known leaker, Komachi Ensaka. He adds A310 as well as two editions of the RK770. While it is just a rumor, it doesn't look impossible to happen. The reason is that one more popular leaker on Bilibili forum with the name of Enthusiastic Citizen suggests that Intel is working on ARC A310 GPU that is going to be as fast as the RX 6400. But just look at what AMD did to the RX 6400, it has completely locked the card so you cannot overclock it. Okay, now the RK770 on the other hand might come in two variants, the 8GB and 16GB editions. So earlier we only knew about the A770 having 16GB of memory, but looks like Intel wants a cheaper version of that GPU too. Komachi adds one more GPU to the list, which is the A780. This is the GPU we have never heard about before, and it is still a rumor, but Intel might produce a flagship ARC GPU just as Nvidia does. But we don't know if the A780 will use the same ACM G10 die as the A770 or the A750. Next we have Nvidia RTX 40 series that is supposedly not going to feature PCIe Gen 5 support. It might be a surprise for us as it was previously thought that Ada Lovelace would support PCIe Gen 5 just as Nvidia made Hopper GPUs fully compatible with the PCIe Gen 5 interface. PCIe Gen 5 provides up to 128GB per second bandwidth in total compared to 64Gbps on PCIe Gen 4. How it will affect the gaming performance of RTX 40 series graphics cards, we don't know but it is also good news for many as PCIe Gen 4 is still new to most gamers and the latest motherboards from Intel and AMD feature only PCIe Gen 4 and not the PCIe Gen 5. It will also take some time for the Gen 5 interface to become common and not everyone would be able to change his motherboard to a new one just for the sake of getting full bandwidth from the PCI Gen 5. Moreover, recently Tom from MLID just confirmed that Nvidia Lovelace is going to use TSMC's 4 nanometer process node. This is the same process node that powers the Hopper GPUs. While Tom mentions 4 nanometer, WCCF Tech says that it is TSMC's 4N process node, which is a revision of 5 nanometer process and is different from the 4 nanometer or N4. So it is a little confusing. However, this is very much needed for the RTX 40 series GPUs as they are already very power hungry, suggesting that the flagship card is going to consume 600 watts easily. On the other hand, we have RDNA 3 GPUs from AMD that are going to use two different nodes, namely the 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer in an MCM design. And if you remember in one of my previous videos, we saw that the flagship RDNA 3 GPUs are going to be more power efficient than Ada Lovelace GPUs. And lastly, the latest report suggests that AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPUs are going to use only DDR5 memory. Although we all know from the CES that AMD is planning a DDR5 upgrade for the Ryzen 7000 CPUs, we did not know that it is completely dropping DDR4 from the support list. If you check the leaked AM5 specifications document from AMD, the document doesn't even mention DDR4. This report is confirmed by Tom's Hardware where we got to know that the B650 and X670 chips and motherboards will not support DDR4 at all. Meanwhile, DDR5 is going to be super fast with Ryzen 7000 CPUs as AMD is planning to release Expo technology. This is essentially an alternative to Intel XMP 3.0 and it stands for Extended Profiles for Overclocking. Basically what it does is that it will store two memory overclocking profiles for DDR5 memories. 
the first profile will be optimized for high bandwidth use and the latter for low latency. AMD's memory enabling manager says that they want to make a big splash with overclocking and the insanely high frequencies we thought to be impossible might be possible with DDR5 on AM5 platform. This means we can see huge improvements in not only games but also in memory intensive applications. Let's wait and see what plans Intel has for the Raptor Lake processors that is also going to support DDR5 out of the box. Meanwhile you can watch this video right here which is about the Ryzen 7000 series APUs. These APUs are supposedly going to outperform many budget graphics cards like the RX 6500 XT. Also don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.